Buenos dias and good morning. Welcome and greeting as we gather to worship, to celebrate God's love and grace in our lives and in this world. Those who are joining us by video, we're delighted that you're joining us and we hope and pray that you'll experience God's love and grace in a meaningful way. In your bulletin, there's some little slips of paper. I think they're bright green this week. If you would please register your presence with us. If we have to get hold of you after the service, then we can. And they will go into these purple boxes that are each of the aisles. And also, if you have offerings, that that also goes in there as well. A uh, couple of other things. I want to be sure everybody knows that Salt and Light is starting this week. And so it runs K through 12 age. And so if you have friends, neighbors, relatives, really, really short people, please invite them to please come. And you can actually register from the website online. And so we're actually moving into the 20th century after all. Uh, but please be sure and get lots of folks in so we can uh, expand this wonderful program. Also, I understand Mary Martha Circle will be also meeting this week for the first time. And they're going to be studying the shortest prophet in the uh, Bible, Nehi Maya. <laughs> There's a meditation at the beginning of the bulletin. Let us prepare for worship. Please rise. Let the same mind be in you that was in Christ Jesus, who though he was in the form of God, did not regard equality with God as something to be exploited, but emptied himself, taking the form of a slave, being born in human likeness. And being found in human form, he humbled himself and became obedient to the point of death, even death on a cross. Therefore God also highly exalted him and gave him the name that is above every name, so that at the name of Jesus every knee should bend in heaven and on earth and under the earth, and every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord, to the glory of God the Father.
Please pray the prayer of adoration with me. Oh, praise God's name together, you servants of the Lord. O oh Lord, for all your favor to us, you are adored. Within your holy temple, before your sacred throne, the chosen heirs of Jacob proclaim you, God, alone. O oh Lord, no mind can measure the greatness of your might. You gave the earth its orbit and set the stars to flight. Your name, O oh God Almighty, endures for endless days, and newborn generations unite to sing your praise. God's love has been poured into our hearts through the gift of the Holy Spirit. The proof of God's amazing love is this. While we were sinners, Christ died for us. Because we have faith in him, we dare to approach God in confidence and rely on God's abundant mercy. Let us confess our sin before God and one another. Holy refuge of our hearts, we must admit that all too often you are not the center of our lives. We find shelter in all the false securities the world offers rather than grounding ourselves in your promises. Our emotions drive our fears, and so we end up making foolish choices rather than being guided by your word and heart. Lord God, do not hide your face from us, but turn to us with forgiveness and hope. Be gracious to us so we might share such grace with those around us. Fill our emptiness with your love so we might become more loving and live lives that honor and glorify your name. Amen. 
Friends, hear the good news. Jesus died and rose again, overthrowing the powers of sin and death, and he did it for the sake of the world. We are enslaved no longer by the powers of darkness. We are set free to follow Jesus. Friends, believe the good news. In Jesus Christ, all our sins are forgiven. Believing and trusting the good news, in Jesus Christ, we are forgiven and set free to follow Jesus. Thanks be to God. Let us declare what we believe using the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Ghost, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth on the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Ghost, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen.
I could have the young disciples join me up front. Good morning. So, today we are reading from one of my favorite books in the whole Bible. We are reading from the book of Romans. We're in the later part. What's already gone on in the book of Romans is that we have learned that God loves us so much, God's done something about it. He's shown up in his son, Jesus Christ. He has lived with us. He has died for us. He has been resurrected into glory. And so now, Paul shifts and he, he asks us, well, what can we do to respond to that? How do we act with gratitude, knowing that God loves us so much? And he gives us quite the list today. Uh, we're going to be going through that list here in a moment. But briefly, he says, while well, we respond to God's love by loving one another, by not thinking we're way smart or way better than other people, by forgetting about getting even, by treating everyone with respect, by being kind even to the people who are not kind to us, and by paying attention to the feelings of others. So that's quite the list, but I want us to think about what Paul is saying about not trying to get even. You all know what I mean by trying to get even? Have, if somebody is mean to you, do you ever feel like being mean back to them? No? Well, good. How? Some of our young disciples are better than I am, I'll admit that. Well, what can happen is sometimes someone's mean to you, so you want to be mean to them, but then what's going to happen is that they're going to want to be mean back to you, and it's just going to go on forever. I have with me, this is called a Newton's Cradle, and it shows me what, what getting evil is like. Someone's mean to you, and so you try to be mean back to them, and it ends up looking like this. You see that? It just goes back and forth and back and forth. Sometimes people get caught up in fights and it just acts like that forever. And so what we are asked of today in our scripture reading is that whenever it's like this, whenever it's somebody being mean and then mean back and mean back, that we would be the person who stops it. Would you pray with me? God, we thank you that you love us so much that you have given us a special calling that we would not uh, be timid, we would not be doormats, but that we would not be angry or bullies either, that we would follow the way of your Son, our Savior, that we would bless those who persecute us and pray for those who present themselves as our enemies. It is in the name of Jesus Christ we pray. Amen. Let us pray. Lord God, for the abundance of your gifts and blessings, we thank you. We are grateful for our lives and all they contain, and for your gracious love that declares us precious in your sight. Help us, we pray to respond well and appropriately to your steadfast loving kindness by allowing your good and compassion to flow through our lives to a world in need. 
anxious, fearful, weary, and angry. Merciful God, help us, we ask, to grow deeper and more faithful through our struggles and circumstances. And may we more and more recognize your presence and grace surrounding us and that supports and sustains us always. Help us look for you in all that we encounter. We pray that along our journey of life, please help us to be attentive to you along the way. Help us keep our eyes and hearts open along this journey and seek to see through your perspective so that we can celebrate your work and presence in this world. Help us, we pray. Show us cause for hope. We pray, Lord, for the sick and ill, for the struggling and anxious. You alone, Lord, are the answer. By your grace and your kindness, O oh Lord, may we arrive at our destination, your kingdom, with our lives transformed, our hearts enlarged, our relations improved, and our faith deepened. Holy God, you do know our true needs. And it is by bringing them to you that we find hope, healing, and transformation. Hear us now in our private prayers of petition in this silence. We thank you, Lord, that you are our God. You love us. You care for us. We thank you, Lord, that you are always with us. And that it is through your presence that we can grow and find healing and hope. Bless us, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen.
The scripture reading this morning is from Romans chapter 12. Let love be genuine. Hate what is evil. Hold fast to what is good. Love one another with mutual affection. Outdo one another in showing honor. Do not lag in zeal. Be ardent in spirit. Serve the Lord. Do not repay anyone evil for evil, but take thought for what is noble in the sight of all. If it is possible, so far as it depends on you, live peaceably with all. Beloved, never avenge yourselves, but leave room for the wrath of God. For it is written, Vengeance is mine, I will repay, says the Lord. No, if your enemies are hungry, feed them. If they are thirsty, give them something to drink. For by doing this, you will heap burning coals on their heads. Do not be overcome by evil, but overcome evil with good. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Let us pray. We do thank you, Lord, for your word. Please open our hearts and minds, our understanding to your will and your wisdom. May the words of my mouth, the meditations of our hearts, be pleasing and acceptable to you. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. A few days after the public schools started up again this year, I came to a school zone, and as required, I slowed down to 15 miles per hour. The car behind me got irritated, angrily zipped around me, ignoring the signs quickly sped through the school zone. As it happened, there was a police cruiser sitting at the end of the school zone that immediately chased after the car with its lights flashing. And as I continued on my way, I passed that same car, pulled over, obviously getting a ticket, and felt a curious sense of pleasure and smug delight. <laughs> Somehow it feels strangely satisfying and righteous to observe the open jaws of justice closing down on someone else an experience that seems like a rebalancing of retribution, especially if we feel like we've been wronged or offended. I, I suppose we all have that natural revenge, retribution, inclination, a need and desire to strike back at those who upset us or distress us. In the ancient world, even predating the Ten Commandments, there was a principle called lex talionis, or the law of retribution, an eye for an eye, tooth for a tooth, life for life. Now, that may sound a bit harsh, but actually its purpose was to restrict revenge by limiting the retribution to actual damages and losses, no more than an eye for an eye and only a tooth for a tooth. It was actually meant to protect the peasant from the wrath of the more powerful by limiting retribution to be proportionate to the crime. But in our Romans text today, Paul instructs otherwise. Verse 17. Do not repay anyone evil for evil, but take thought for what is noble in the sight of all. If it is possible, so far as it depends on you, live peaceably with all. This is extremely counter-cultural and counter-intuitive. That is, those who know they are the beloved children of God, we're to live out a very different attitude and set of values than the way the world around us operates and functions. And probably nothing goes more against our natural inclinations than to give up our right to revenge and embittered resentment. Now, that doesn't mean we just accept and go along with ongoing injustice or abuse or allow people to do harm and 
do us wrong without any consequence. But we are to deal with conflict, issues, and disagreements without any bitterness, payback, or holding a grudge. And by our response, we are to recognize that they too are loved by God, which calls us to reflect God's mercy and grace for them more than God's wrath and judgment against them. That means rather than trying to satisfy our anger by attacking, which, as Nick points out, tends to escalate the conflict even further and usually increases our own sense of resentment and bitterness, Paul is saying in verse 21, don't deal with evil in its own terms. Don't be overcome by evil, but overcome evil with good. The Lord God knows us entirely, knows all there is to know about us, knows our every word, our every word, deed, thought if we've ever had, and yet is absolutely committed and irrevocably in love with us. Therefore, we can be and we're called and commanded to be so secure in our faith and certainty in God's love and promises that we are willing to forego our right to rancor and retaliation as those who have repeatedly sinned against the Lord's perfection, and yet are the recipients of God's amazing and unwarranted grace, and whose love for us is far stronger than even the biggest mistake or our worst failing, the Lord God asks us to reflect that same love that we have received by sharing gracious love and mercy toward our neighbors. By God's grace, we are called to live peaceful and generous lives that bear witness to the truth, the grace, mercy, and promises of God by letting Christ's light shine in and through us as those who have been liberated and upheld by God's gracious love. When we receive Jesus Christ into our lives and follow as his own, then God's love and grace gradually redefines and transforms our lives. And that creates new possibilities, other options, for grace to be our guide in how we live out our lives in this world and move away from payback, resentment, and bitterness. Knowing that God is entirely trustworthy, steadfast and faithful, and that we are fully secure in the certainty of God's love and promises, as people of faith, we are being made able to forgo our desire to hate, to retaliate, and strike back. Knowing that there is far more than just this one short mortal lifetime. Paul would ask, what are our troubles today compared to the eternity that waits for us? When Paul wrote to the Christians living in Rome, they were struggling with unjust persecution. And yet he urges them not to fight back. Starting verse 17. Do not repay anyone evil for evil, but for the, take thought of what is noble in the sight of all. Do not be overcome by evil, but overcome evil with good. Now, Paul's not describing some weak, wimp, wimpy sentimentalism. But it's something far more difficult and demanding. It's risky and it may not even work out the way we want. And yet he calls us to trust that God's way will overcome evil. In her book, The Hiding Place, the late Carrie Ten Boom wrote about speaking at a worship service in Munich after World War II. And she recognized a former SS Nazi in the audience who had been a guard at the prison concentration camp where she and her sisters suffered as prisoners. He came up, greeted and thanked her for her message about grace and how grateful he was that Jesus had washed away his sins. The sight of this man filled her with anger and vengeful thoughts 
And when he held out his hand to her, she prayed silently, Lord, I can't forgive him. Give me your forgiveness. Corey writes that when she reached out and touched his hand to shake it, something incredible happened that she describes like the flow of current. And that it wasn't her forgiveness or her willingness to forgive him, but God's mercy, God's love, God's forgiveness flowing through her to him. As followers of Christ, as the blessed recipients of God's gracious love, we are commanded to let the Lord God heal and restore, to allow the Lord to love and bless other people through us so that we become living conduits and vessels of God's grace through which God can express his unconditional love for all by our refusal to respond with anger, bitterness, and rancor because God's grace and presence really does make that much difference. As Paul wrote to the Christians living and suffering in Rome, do not repay anyone evil for evil, but take thought for what is noble in the sight of all. If it is possible, so far as it depends on you, live peaceably with all. Do not overcome evil, with, but overcome evil with good. The way of the Lord is to let mercy triumph over bitterness and revenge by overcoming evil with good through God's healing power, by destroying our enemies, by building relationships. Our new re reality is centered and anchored in God's loving mercy. And that redefines who we are, what we should do, and our future that's ahead of us. Which really isn't about trying harder to be nicer but it's connecting deeper and closer to our Lord Jesus Christ. And yes, that goes against every fiber of our being that wants to get even. Our desire and need to prove and show that we are in the right. And there's nothing more difficult or demanding than to let God love our attackers through us and seek peace when we have been offended and hurt. By refusing to act with anger, bitterness, or take revenge. We are allowing God to open up the possibility of reconciliation through our faithful obedience toward mercy and forbearance. In my years of ministry, I have often been amazed at the unlikely transformations and reconciliations I have seen the Lord our God accomplish. I've seen angry, offended people manage somehow to work together. Neighbors drop a lawsuit and reach an agreement. Countless ways. As Christians, as the children of God, our purpose for our living is to receive God's gracious love and then share it with others. Even with the ones who do wrong, who distress, offend us, and harm us. For those same evildoers are also loved by our Father in heaven. This isn't easy to hear and even more difficult to live. It's a command and it's God's wisdom and truth toward healing our world, our nation, our community. And we do need to hear and urgently, desperately need to heed. Though very difficult to do. The question is quite simple. By my attitude, by my will and about what I'm about to say or do, will this action, will these words I speak draw me closer and deeper in my walk of faith with Jesus and reflect God's desire and purpose that all should be saved? As Christians, we believe that we are exactly where God wants us to be. That God is intentional, purposeful, and absolutely sovereign. And there is a mission and purpose for us to fulfill right here. What Jesus Christ is asking is that 
when we have been wronged and mistreated, that we restrain our human inclination to get even and get payback and instead seek to reflect the unconditional love of God and thereby not feed into an endless cycle of hatred. We, we come to the Lord's table today, a place of grace and welcome as those who have repeatedly sinned against our God. God, whose love is still far stronger and greater than even our worst mistake and worst failing. As recipients of that amazing and totally unwarranted grace, he asks and calls us that we show that same love to our neighbors and for our loves, lives to reflect the love we have received. In the Sermon of the Mount, Jesus said, You have heard it said, You shall love your neighbor and hate your enemy. But I say to you, love your enemies, pray for those who persecute you, so that you may be the children of your Father in heaven. As Paul explained to the Christians in Rome, do not repay anyone evil for evil, but as far as possible, and it depends on you, live peaceably with all. Do not be overcome by evil, but overcome evil with good. And that is the word of God. Let us pray. Gracious and merciful God, we, we thank you, Lord, for your word, even when it's difficult. We thank you that you love us even when we fail and sin. We thank you, Lord, you never give up on us. And we thank you, Lord, for calling us to be a community where we can show mercy, where we can grow in our faith with you. Help us, Lord, always be welcoming and let your grace flow. We pray this through Jesus, our Lord and Savior. Amen. Let us stand and join in him 519, You are my strength when I am weak. Jesus said, come unto me, all that are weak and heavy laden, and I will give you rest. This is the Lord's table. It is not a specifically Presbyterian table, but it is the Lord's table. All of the children of God are invited to come to share, partake, and be a part of this banquet feast together. You do not need to be a member of this church to be Presbyterian to be welcomed here, for we are all loved by our Lord. Let us pray. We do thank you, Lord, for being our God, for calling and equipping us to be your people. We ask, Lord, that you would guide us, fill us with your truth and wisdom, fill us with your Holy Spirit and your healing. We thank you, Lord, that even when the world turns against you, your blessed creation, you did not give up on us. We thank you, Lord, that throughout the scriptures, you feed your people 
You lead your people. You provide them with the waters they need. Indeed, you are the waters of life. We ask, Lord, you'd bless this table. May it be a representation of your own love and grace. You desire to feed your people. Feed us, Lord, and equip us to go and serve faithfully in your name. We pray, Lord, as you taught your disciples, our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. On the night in which he was betrayed, after giving thanks, Jesus broke the bread, said, this is my body broken for you. Eat in remembrance of me. It is our tradition that as we are served the bread, that you would say, this is the bread of life. And then we'd all hold the bread until all have been served. We might eat together as the one family of the Lord. Ministering to you in his name, we give you the bread of life.
body of Christ, let us eat in remembrance of him. After they had eaten, Jesus took the cup and said, This is the new covenant sealed in my blood, shed for you for the remission of sin. Drink in remembrance of me. As often as we eat of this bread and drink of this cup, we proclaim the Lord's death until he comes again. When we are passing the cup tray to our neighbor, it is our tradition to say, this is the cup of salvation. You may drink when you are ready as a sign that we make an individual decision to follow Jesus. Ministering to you in his name, we give you the cup.
Let us pray. Gracious God, at this table we have gathered as your family to receive the blessing of bread and wine, the promise of boundless love that brings us life. Help us to know true humility so that we might show compassion. Transform us into your likeness and send us into the world as peacemakers so that your peace may be known in the world. In the name of Christ, our Lord and Savior, amen. Those who are able, please stand for the benediction. And the feast will continue in the next building following the benediction response. The in-betweeners have put together a wonderful spread. Those who wish individual prayer after the service, Janet and I will be up front for that. And now may the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and give you peace. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen.